In his State of the Commonwealth Address, Governor Patrick called for new and improved trains, roads, and bridges. It could add up to a big tax increase, so the legislature seemed kind of restrained in their enthusiasm. To help us understand what's at stake, we've got Mia Johnson, Program Director of the T-Riders Union, and Diana Bell, Senior Organizer for Community Labor United. Mia, Diana, thanks for being with us. Thank you for this Thank opportunity you. to be here. Uh, Mia, let me ask you, uh, of course, well, big delays on both the green and red lines yesterday. So the T's income and GM said we just can't have the expectation that the system could just keep going without necessary replacements. Uh, I guess maybe this is an example of sort of using a crisis as an opportunity. But what is your membership? What does the riders union think is its sort of top priority along these lines? So our top priority, we've had many questions actually fielded around the stuff that's been happening with the green line in particular um, over the last several months. And... Uh, one of the things that we realize and we say, you know, there's a, there's a level of things that need to happen. And the reason that they haven't been happening, we're, we're um, dealing with a 30 to 40 year old transit system. And if there's no money for operations to change that transit system to make it better and to improve it and to replace and fix things and maintain them, um, then we will continue to have this crisis. So we need to raise money and push our legislatures and our senators and our representatives and particularly the Boston delegation to stand up and stand for riders and stand for people who need and depend on public transit. And Diana, uh, of course, the T Riders Union kind of self-explanatory, but just what is the Community Labor United? And what, what's its, its role sure. in all this? So my organization, Community Labor United, we're a six-year-old organization based here in the region uh, that brings together community-based building groups like T-Riders Union along with uh, Labor were founded in part by the Greater Boston Labor Council and our role in the in the fight um, where we're standing together with T-Riders Union is we convene a statewide campaign called Public Transit, Public Good that's really working together not only with folks here in the MBTA district but also across the different regions in the state like Western Massachusetts, Southeastern Mass, Worcester and beyond to really um, to push forward this message that not only do we need investment in our public transit system, we also need to ensure that there's equity and, um, and fixes made in the system to make sure it's, it's accessible and really bringing the opportunity our communities need. Of course, the, the phrase public transit, public good sounds pretty good, but one of the criticisms of the governor's plan, I guess I could probably get you to both react to this, is that uh, he wants so much, maybe if he had you know, tightened his priorities a little bit, the, the whole thing might be a little bit more doable. Maybe I could just get uh, your reaction from the Writers' Union first on that one, Mia. Sure. So um, we're actually really excited that the governor has taken such a prominent stand um, for public transit and for transit in general, but also funding of public transit and seeing the value that it, it adds to the community by providing access to opportunities. Um, there are many things that we want um, our public transit to look like, but we also realize we can't even begin to build it until we have money to do so, until we can begin to say this is where the money is. Um, so although it's wide and there's a lot of things in there, we feel like there needs to be even more. Like there needs to be a way of maintaining if you're going to raise fares, then you need to protect the poor and you need to protect the low income communities and you protect their access and their service. If there's going to be, if you're going to do something at the MBTA region, you need to make sure that the RTAs are protected and that they have access so that their service is expanded beyond six o'clock at night and on the weekend so that they can go to work. You know, and we look at opportunity across the state, not just opportunity for a few. So we're really excited. We're excited that he's taking the ball and um, is starting to play the game. Mm -hmm. And Diana, on the same question, um, you know, narrower priorities, possibly a little bit more doable. What's your view on that? I think I really have to echo the words of Mia. I think we're extremely encouraged by the governor's plan. We think that, you know, the moments not only today, it was yesterday to really mm -hmm. to put forth the vision, the ambitious vision we need to really create, as the governor says, a, a transportation system of the 21st century. And I think that, you know, this moment right now gives us a, a crucial opportunity to, to really talk about the vital role that public transit has for our communities and to understand why this investment is so important for economic growth, for businesses, for communities, and for regions across the state, not only in the greater Boston region. So I think that we all know that the legislative process ahead of us where a lot of this, this funding and different reforms in the system is going to happen is going to be a, a, a moment of compromise. So I think to start with an ambitious plan is, and the ambitious vision is where we need to start. It's the right starting point. And uh, the governor was sitting right there yesterday, and I guess he blamed a lot of the problems on 
the debt from the kind of mismanaged big dig, which I guess a lot of people would agree to, but basically um, sort of a, take a contrary position this it's got, got to have more taxes to pay for it. Uh, that's, that's more money that people could use for other things, could be spent on other things in the neighborhood. Maybe you know, bosses could hire more people. Uh, just a, a little bit about, very briefly from both of you, and th there is other uses for this money. So what, what, um, what's, uh, explain to me how this is the best way to go with it now. So um, actually, in our, in our conversation, sure. taking the tea over here today, we were talking about, we were, I was giving her an update about a meeting I just had with um, one of our committees uh, and located in Dorchester, Roxbury, and Mattapan. And um, on that committee, there are several people that have young children. And what came out was that, you know, we're we were doing a check-in on like, how's transit treating you is kind of our check-in. And a lot of these families are not able to afford to get a pass anymore because it's too expensive up front. And so they're walking more or they're trying to uh, finagle rides. Um, and they're not living in communities where there's a lot of access. So, and, and they have the knowledge to know that this debt being, being, the big dig debt being held in solely in transportation without any real progressive funding to help alleviate it is gonna continue to make access and affordability a crisis. And uh, you know our riders are feeling that like this, that they're feeling it now. So a year from now, or beginning in March or beyond, it could become even more of a crisis in communities which need that support. Um, I've been asking a lot of vague general questions. I know we've got sort of drivers and riders united, so I can just kind of wrap up real quickly with something very specific. The governor again sitting right here yesterday talking about the the unused potential of the Fairmount line. Um, they can have now. Um, I guess maybe subways running on the commuter rail lines. Um, um, how do drivers feel about that? How do riders feel about that? This is very specific. Let me just start with you, Diana. Uh, Fairmont line, uh, what's going to happen there? I think we're very encouraged. I think the Fairmont line is a critical, a critical rail service for communities like Dorchester, Roxbury, Hyde Park, and beyond. I think we're very encouraged by the investment that the governor, the focus uh, and investment in these sort of rail for communities um, for too long. I think the commuter rail has been seen as a, a service um, for, for folks outside of the Boston region, for folks maybe in, for higher income communities. I think the Fairmont Line is an excellent example of uh, that rail is also needs to be accessible to to working class communities. And I think that, that we're very encouraged by, by the, the focus on the Fairmont Line that the governor's been putting. Thank you. I guess they'll be called DMUs. The, the governor didn't even yeah. know what they were. Uh, we weren't too sure what the, the, yeah. the M said. We'll, we'll find that out in the future. Yeah. We'll be glad yeah. to have you folks back when there's, there's more to talk about on this. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Mia Johnson and Diana Bell, and we'll have more news in a moment after this message.